Oh, uh, I walked. Uh, we lived uh, between 7th and 8th Street on W Street, and I'd walk up to 7th, and then all the way down 7th to Q, and then I would not take a right over to 8th, but went down the alley at 7th Street all the way down to O, which led me into the west entrance at the old Stalker School building. I didn't go around to the front. I went in the west entrance. Whatever it took, I was always there on time. I was not late. I just, the thing is, I remember the Beatles hit it big when I was in sixth grade. They would, at, at lunch and at recess, everybody was out trading the cards. You know, the little cards that had their pictures on it, everybody was trading cards, especially the girls. Girls loved them. Guys didn't understand what was going on, but the girls just loved them. So that's what happened in 64. So you started in 50, so I started in 58. 58, I started in 57. And graduated in right. 65. And my favorite teacher <laughs> was Mr. Lewis. Uh, my favorite was Helen Ganey, third grade. Ooh. You didn't, you, she was nice, but she wasn't Mr. Lewis. Oh. Well, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Mr. Lewis, Lewis, did you guys know he had a chunk of Mastodon tusk? He actually, early on, he would go to Canada, I mean, uh, he'd go to Alaska every summer. He had friends up there, and he came, actually came back with a chunk of Mastodon Tusk. Talked about how big the strawberries were up there, and all kinds of stories. I remember Mr. Really, Lewis, I had him. Did you have him? I had my leg out in, the aisle, out in the aisle one day. He walked by and smacked it with a book. He would do that. Yeah. You know, get your leg back in there. Okay. And do you, did you know the <laughs> capital of Alaska? Do you know? I don't know. know. I don't know. <laughs> I remember that from that yeah. class. Well, wonder what else they would want to know. I remember when Lincoln, not Lincoln, Kennedy got shot. Because yeah. I was in fifth grade. Fifth grade, I was in sixth. And Vestal Turner was the principal. And he came over the loudspeaker and said, Our president has just been shot. And I sat there and thought, Who would want to shoot Kent Turner? <laughs> He was our class president, and I thought, I thought, why would somebody want to shoot Kent Turner? You know, it then, then finally I heard of uh, the president of the United States got shot. Yeah, I remember that. That was in fifth grade. I believe I attended the old Stalker School from 69 to 76, 75, 76. And I would have attended the old Stalker School from 72 to 78. Uh, Miss, I think. Then she became Mrs. Noggle. And her first name I found out later was Isil. But as when I had her, it was either Miss or Mrs. And she was a top notch person and teacher. And uh, the one thing, besides being an outstanding teacher, I remember about her, she controlled the classroom. There were other teachers, uh, she was my third or fourth grade teacher, my first, second and grade teachers, they had somebody they couldn't control, they sent them, uh, usually a boy, up the stairs to J.J. Um, Tatum, who was the principal, and he took care of it. Uh, Mrs. Noggle had a paddle under her desk, and she took care of the troublemakers, not in front of the class, but she would uh, take them outside the, the door into the hall, and all we all could hear inside was <laughs> three licks. And uh, no, none of her students ever went to the principal. She handled it. And it didn't last long. Uh, that happens a few times, and uh, she obviously swung that paddle really well because those guys all straightened up. I can actually remember walking down between two, we had, back then all the, all the desks were locked together and those yes, things. wooden desks. Walking down between an aisle when I heard that. Yep. Somebody Ink came wells. in and said that. Yeah. On the brighter side, yes. do you remember at lunch and it, when it snowed, we didn't have snow days, nobody oh. had snow days. If it snowed, you went to school, cool. but it was neat because then nobody had tennis shoes except for for practice and stuff. And when you went to school, you had leather bottom shoes. So when it snowed, we'd go, with, old Lincoln had the hill. 
you had the flat area where school was and it dropped off into this gravel area. Stalker. Stalker. Yeah. What did I say? You said Lincoln. And that's where yeah. my kids went. So they'd drop off and we would pack that up yep. with as hard snow. Like basically ice. And you'd take a big run and see if you could slide down that on your feet. Go down that hill. But what was really one of the neater things is if you couldn't do it, everybody had vinyl coats then. So that thick, heavy vinyl, you just take a run and plop down and slide down on your back. Just spinning around, go right down. By the time lunch was over, right. we were soaked. Soaking wet. Everybody stinking wet, yep. yep. But we had a good time. I, I had a couple. Uh, Mrs. Noggle was my fourth grade teacher, and fourth grade was hard for me, and she really, really took the time to help me and do some things with me to um, help me get through it. Um, then I also had Jay Wilson, who was a history teacher, and um, used to do all kinds of things. We'd go in, he'd take us to caves, spelunking. He'd take us up to, he had a place out in Springville. He'd take us and let us shoot black powder rifles. Uh, we went and cleaned cemeteries, Clean old cemeteries graves. that were grown up. And we'd go out there and we'd clean them up. We'd take saws and axes and everything and clean up the old cemeteries and um, put do, stuff on them to yeah, clean them so you could read. Clean the stones off. And then we do what they call uh, grave rubbing, which they take a big sheet of paper and you lay it up against the gravestone. Two kids would hold it flat and another kid would take a piece of chalk and rub over the top of it and we'd be able to read these old stones that you otherwise couldn't read to see what the names were when people died. And of course he was big into the historical society and stuff. So I think that's one of my favorite things is just the, the, the different times he took us places and did things mm -hmm. like that. I'd have to agree on Mr. Wilson. Mr. Tincher I was scared of. He was a big yeah, teacher with a paddle. Guy with the paddle. <laughs> I never got paddled, but everybody was scared of Mr. Tincher. And you heard that paddle. But. And Mr. Bodenhammer. Mr. Bodenhammer was the other paddler. Vestal Turner was the principal at the time, but he was at that time was getting older, so he didn't handle a lot of the discipline. It was mostly Mr. Tincher and Mr. Bodenhammer mm -hmm. are the ones that handled all the discipline. I also remember playing marbles out on me? the playground. You never played marbles? Yeah, we did. Yeah, down yeah. in the gravel. Down in the gravel. We'd spread that. We'd smooth out and get rid of the rocks and have yeah. gravel. Right. I'm and I also remember there was no gym at Stalker. Right. So if you played, got lucky and made it on the basketball team, you had to go down to Warren Dean Jones Memorial for basketball practice. Yep. Which was about four blocks away. Four blocks away. Go yeah. over there. We walk to school. The only kids, when I was in stalker school, everybody walked to school except for the kids coming in from Williams. They had closed the school in Williams, and so those kids in Williams got bussed into Bedford, but the rest of the kids, all the kids that lived in town that went to stalker had to walk. And we didn't get snow days. If it snowed, we walked to school. Uh, we'd walk home for lunch. We'd get, and that way we got, I don't remember the time, but we had to have got at least an hour for lunch. Because I can remember a lot of times walking home, eating lunch, and then walking back to school. And I walked from 13th Street. That's I lived on 13th Street, so I walked down the main blocks. That is. My favorite subject has always been mathematics, and uh, I've always been a numbers guy, and I still am. I, I that never changed. As soon as I got home, I had to go to work. I remember. Uh, I didn't go to Lytic because my dad needed me to help him load a huckster truck as soon as school was out. So, uh, no, no, I, no participation in athletics at Stalker. In fact, I'm not sure there was any, honestly. I don't remember them even being any. There was no gym there, there was not a area big enough to play softball. Uh, if, if there was any, I am not aware of what it was. Yeah, the old, the old girls, girls club. club. Yeah. That's, where we, that's where you'd go and play basketball. Nobody was using it, so that's where you went to play basketball. Oh, another thing I remember about grade school, do you remember the marionette that came about once a year? The yeah, and we had to walk to the, the high school, which well, is now the junior right. high, and go into the auditorium, which is burned down and no longer yeah, there. Yeah, I remember when that burned, too. Yeah, We stood there at the fence and watched all the smoke bellow up from it. And thought the whole town was on fire. Also, at lunch, we remember a lot about lunch. We went home. 
Yeah, we did. But when we came back and played, we had we, when it was summer, when it was nice weather, you'd, they'd give us a bunch of balls. Yeah, yeah. And somebody'd st you'd stand on top of the hill and kick it down into the gravel area. Whoever caught it would then go up and kick it down into the gravel area, like a bunch of monkeys. Yep. And the big thing was to try train and monkeys. kick we it just train over monkeys. the fence. We tried. Nobody could make it, though. I remember a couple of sixth graders, Toby Williamson always could. Could he? Yes, and so Howard Winston. Well, they were bigger. They were and, bigger, and, and I remember we stand down there and there the ball go, just sailing, and go over the fence, and everybody run to see who see teachers let it go get it. Yeah, see so. if you get off campus. Yeah. Let's see. Wonder what else they would want to know. How many times you got paddled? Yeah, once. Never got paddled. I've seen kids get paddled, but I never. Got I heard kids get paddled. I watched Mrs. Noggle yank a kid out of the chair one day, and she laid into him, buddy. He told her to shut up. That was into that. You don't do that. <laughs> we had basketball at Stalker, but that was the only competitive sport. And it was kind of interesting because um, Stalker didn't have a gym, so we had practice over at the Warren Dean Jones Memorial. But when it came time for the games, we only played a tournament once a year where all the elementary schools went to the Bedford High School at the time. And so all of the students would be lined up and would walk from the old Stalker School all the way down O Street to the high school for this all afternoon tournament where all the elementary schools would play each other. And then we'd walk all the way back to Stalker in time for school to dismiss and go home. So at that time, that was the only sport that Stalker had, you know, where we competed with other kids. Now, as far as, as far as, you know, activities for recess and stuff, we, we had uh, the playground outside was all blacktop when I was in elementary. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest, our biggest activity was basically standing on the top of the hill on the east side of the playground and kick, trying to kick the ball as far as you could and get over the fence. Because everybody wanted to go over the fence so they could run up to the teacher and actually get a go off the school grounds down into the neighborhood's yard and get the ball and bring it back up. And so that was a big deal. We played uh, kick pin kickball, whatever you want to call it now, down in the bottom behind. Um, uh, if we had a recess, we went downstairs. The other thing I remember, you want to hear this, um, the restroom. If you had to go to the restroom, there was none anywhere except in the basement. And you had to leave the classroom, go down the stairway or maybe two stairways to the basement then make a turn back to the south and the boys restroom was on the east side of the basement the girls were on the west but that's where you had to go there was none anywhere else a stalker school has changed when they built the new one anyway that uh, in fact school has changed considerably as you well know because you do that you get paddled at school and then you go home and get paddled again well, the other thing, nice thing about the old soccer school was when you were up on the top floor to go to the bathroom, you had to go all the way down to the basement to go to the bathroom. That took the a only, while. It, it was the only place to go to the basement. So if you were sick, you had to run. I remember that one time. I didn't make it. Well, I, I can remember all the teachers I had. See, who was our unfavorite teacher? Mrs. Ma Layman. Martin had a reputation too. Yeah, Mrs. Layman was a bad one. Yeah, she I had her mean. for Martin's meaner though. I never had Martin. Well, Martin was that was second grade, I think. Mm -hmm. Layman was third. Layman was third. Yeah, they were. Martin was just a look like a little bulldog. Yeah, at second grade, I got lucky. It was Miss um, Bridges came, and I had her. Yeah. She was that was her first year there. Fact well, is. I'm not sure if she took Martin's plate. No, she took Mrs. Remember Mrs. Smith? Oh, yeah. Tall, dark-haired older yeah, lady. real nice. Yes. Didn't have her. Actually, I can remember two teachers in school that you really didn't want to have. Layman and Martin. Yeah. The rest of them were... Pretty nice. Pretty nice. You liked. As long as you did what you were supposed yeah. to. Had Max York in sixth grade. Yep. I had Southern. Yeah. We'd have P.E. We'd go outside and play kickball a lot, and we had a, I don't remember what it was called, it was kind of like softball, except the, the ball was real mushy and the bat was flat. I remember doing that because there wasn't really enough room to really play regular baseball. 
because they'd hit the ball too far. So we had a kind of a flat bat and a mushy ball, so you couldn't hit it quite as far. And you could catch it without a mitt, so we didn't have to have a mitt. So a lot of things they did that way so that we could still play games outside, but not, because there wasn't a lot of room, you know, like right. they do nowadays. We had a merry-go-round. Because you had which the playground on top. And playground then... was up on top and had a merry-go-round, which you don't have anymore. <coughs> Tried to get it going fast enough that it slung everybody off. <laughs> And the monkey bars you climbed around on. Didn't like, did we have teeter totters too? I don't remember those. I, I remember the round thing that you climbed up. Yeah, that was kind the of the monkey bars. Yeah. The, the, to me, the whole neighborhood of the area I lived in uh, the soccer school, First Park, uh, the old grocery stores, and the older people who looked after the kids that's the fact. Now, not the school any more than the neighborhood. And and I'm talking about an area about six blocks wide and eight, ten blocks long. Oh, well, there was never a problem in me walking to school because as has just been stated, the neighborhood watched after the kids walking. I wasn't the only one walking down the sidewalk to Stalker School. And uh, if somebody started getting out of line, uh, there was somebody stepped out and took care of it in the neighborhood as you walked. And I, uh, I, I, there was never a problem. Writing. Well, I didn't have trouble there. I did. I couldn't write. I got A's and B's and everything else and F's and writing and had to stay after school and practice writing and practice writing when I got home and finally dad realized he couldn't write either so he finally said forget it. So. I think Mom convinced him the fact that said, Perry, you can't write either, so. But I, I could not get anything other. You're talking about writing nice or spelling. No, spelling, I got A's in spelling. But yeah, I mean, ri actual write longhand cursive writing. Yeah, because these kids writing. don't know about writing cursive. Oh. We started writing cursive in second grade, and they gave you a special pen. Yes. You couldn't write with just a ballpoint pen. They would give you a special pen and special paper that you would learn to write on. And you actually had class every day on how to write in cursive. And had things up on the wall where yep. you showed you how to do nice penmanship. Well, mine always went this way. You have to get your pen out. Yep. And we have them write in class. And they give you that specially lined paper and you had to sit there and write it in there. E, 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 E. You remember music class? Music? We go down into the cafeteria and they line up first grade was in the front, second, all the way back to the back. You're talking about just a... Was that music class? That was music with Mrs. Keach. Well, I remember doing it, but I didn't that, know it was, was music That class. was music. Oh, wow. I went about to music twice, class. About and twice didn't... a week. And everybody would, you know, sing, row, row, row your boat and all that stuff. And they had do round. I remember doing um, the rounds, and you yeah. always look forward to becoming a senior because everybody sits on the, not senior, sixth, sixth grade, grade, because everybody sat on the floor until you were in the sixth grade, and then you got to sit on a bench in the yep, back. In the back, yeah. Yep, I remember that. The big thing with us was they had built the Crowders down there, but prior to that, down the street on uh, what would be O Street, down on O and 6th, there was a paint store that was also a toy and candy store. So we'd kind of, sometimes if, if we ate lunch at school, you'd try and keep part of your lunch money and go down there after school on the way home, or before you go home, buy a bunch of candy. Because the candy back then, you know, you get, you get a candy bar for a nickel. So you could get a lot of candy with your lunch money. But we also we had open lunch, so we could either go home or eat at school. And a lot of times, if big treat would be to get a couple bucks from your parents and get to go eat at Three Pigs. You know, we go eat at Three Pigs instead of eating at the school. Kind of make us in the kind of big shots, getting to go eat out by ourselves. Uh, I didn't go to an Olympic bus. My dad needed me back home as soon as possible after school was out to help him load the huckster truck with groceries for the next day. And he run a huckster into the county and that truck had to be loaded every day. If I had gone to Olytic on a bus, I would not have gotten back in time to have given him the extra time he needed to work that evening. So uh, he, he wanted me to walk rather than take a bus <laughs> to Olytic. He wanted me to walk to Stalker because I got home sooner. Oh, w Street had to go to Olytic because the city limit sign was on the alley between V and W. So we were in the township. And so he had to make an agreement with okay, the county people that they would not have to come and get me in a bus, which they would have had to do if I went to Olytic, 
On the other hand, he would get see to it that I got the soccer, and they would do away with any fee transfer between Olytic and soccer. So th they balanced the money. Of course, his way to get me to soccer was walk up to 7th Street, point his finger to the east, and say, walk right down through there, and when you get to the end, there's an alley. Walk through it. And it, that's exactly what it was. And every day, to the school, back, and I seem to think that on occasion I came home for lunch, but I can't remember how long that lasted. Remember our class of Mr. Wilcox? Yeah, I kept hearing about his wig, never fell off, but you always heard stories about it. Yep. And that was off in that little room off to the side. No, he came to class. He came to your class. Unless you had it. special. Yeah. I had special. And there was a room downstairs, which I didn't even know existed, and we'd go in that room. Uh, yes, and that's where that we was, had special art yeah, class. Yeah, that was a special class. That's where I got to thinking one day. I was thinking from the time Dad started Stalker till Amy finally got out of Stalker, there would have been a mullet in Stalker school every year. Because you had Dad, Carol, and Jerry. Then yeah. you started, and when you was going, Gar Jerry was still there. Was he? Yeah, he's only four years yeah, old. Yeah, that's we true. Are. He was five years. Yeah. And were you a patrol boy? Yeah. You were on patrol. We stopped traffic. We were given a the you hat had, and the vest with this badge on it, and we could walk right out in the middle of the road and stop, and stop traffic. The traffic. Everybody. So kids could cross the road. In the to go morning to school. before school started, we were at the corners getting kids across the street, and when and at, night, at lunch, do it at lunch too. Yeah. For a few minutes, you did it at lunch, and then you did it at the end of the day. And so, yeah, there was no adults. It Every, was all kids. No, at this the intersection of Eighth and O Street, there was an adult. Later, not, no, not when I when we there wasn't. There, I no, there was when I was. I do not but remember. But every adults. corner within two blocks of Stalker, basically, there was a patrol boy, yeah. and he was in charge of getting the kids across the streets. He had a yellow hat and a white sash with a big badge. With a well, was a belt. Well, you crossed yeah. over and around your waist, yeah. and you had a badge on it. You, you said you were a captain. Right, you was I was a only a lieutenant. lieutenant. I had you, a red badge. She had a blue badge. Do you remember the helmets? Yeah, the the, red, the yellow. The actually old army helmets that they painted yellow. Were they? Yeah. I remember. The, I remember the helmet. Yeah, I guess they were, they weren't were, they? Yep. And you got a yep. fancy raincoat to wear too. Yep. But it never rained. Yeah, I remember that. Seemed like it rained all the and time. You, from what you talked about, you got the bad job because you had to walk all over the place, walk making sure everybody's doing their job. Every morning and every evening, had to walk, make sure everybody was where it was supposed to be. Yeah, lieutenant, you just went out and stood there and kind of watched. And if they weren't, you got to write them up. I didn't remember writing anybody up. Because you weren't a captain. You were oh, just a true. lieutenant. I was only a lieutenant. So you've been a captain. You got to write people up. Never got anybody killed. Didn't no. even get close. I don't remember a kid ever getting hit by a car. No. Not even close. Everybody knew we were coming out, so they'd drive up slow. Yep. But I remember during, and I don't know what year, it's one of the times when I actually quit eating lunch at school and started going to eat out was they went to these pre-packed lunches. And if you think about the little the little trays that you get nachos in at the ball game, that's what it was. It was a little tray like that, and they had all this food in here, and everybody got one of those, and they I guess they threw them in something to warm them up. So they didn't have to deal with dishes and all that stuff, and they were nasty. <laughs> uh, hopefully, they don't still serve those. So that's that's when we started a lot of times going out to eat, go to Three Pigs, or go home. Um, if you had, if you didn't go home for lunch, you'd have had to take it in a sack or a box or something. No, they did not serve school at Stalker. No air conditioning. Rain and snow made no difference. Cold weather made no difference. Yeah, I'm walking in it, so. But uh, the one thing I also remember, since you mentioned weather, there was no air conditioning either, and I can remember on occasion it got so hot that we would go over those big, uh, one of those six-foot windows, I believe, on the north side of the building, and we'd take a rod and ram that thing up about six or eight inches and block it so we could get the air out of the north end of the room. And the teacher and uh, we boys did that. North side of the building. And if you want to go, those windows are still just like they were then. You just levied them up and blocked them. And that's how the air got in. 
Well, it's, it's a sad thing because you've lost Madden already. I mean, that was the school of the bullies and they're gone. Nobody even remembers that. But, but yeah, it's, it's sad that you're losing all this community identity and neighborhood right. identity. Because I mean, I remember as a kid, we had a big carnival and I mean, everybody in the neighborhood would yep. come in, they had food down in the basement and all the rooms had set up some sort of a flea market thing in all the rooms or some sort games. of games. It's just a big thing every year everybody looked forward to. So that, yeah, that's gone. And that was, that was the neighborhood. That's, you know, you were a stalker kid or you were a Parkview kid or you were Lincoln kid, stinking Lincoln kid. Yeah. Sad. It's I mean, sad. It's sad. It's, it's, uh, Changes like this is... It's sad because I, I also, I understand, you know, when I was growing up, the only way I could see a lot of kids was sometimes at school. You know, in the summertime, I see the kids in my own neighborhood, but the kids that lived on the other side of Stalker, I really wouldn't see them much in the summer. And and it's kind of sad to know that, that right now, that whole group of kids on this end of town are all alike. You know, they all have a lot of things in common, and now they're having to be uprooted and put in with a bunch of kids that they may not even know because they live clear on the opposite end of town. And that, that concerns me a little bit that, that we're taking two different groups of kids and just shoving them together. And I just, you know, most of the kids that go to Stalker are a lot alike and they get along and, and to just assume that they're gonna get along with kids that live on the other end of town or live in a different um, economical situation um, that's the thing that really concerns me. I don't, you know, I hate to see the name go away because I, you know, I went there from first grade all the way to sixth grade. And, but at the same time, it bothers me more that we're um, just throwing everybody together and not giving any, any um, thought to that or concern about that. And it concerns me. Yep. Yep.